You meditate well today? Yes. Oh, so young and sit here all day? Master, I'm a doctor in the past couple of years um, uh, through communicating with my patients in regard to the vegan diet. Mm. I've seen uh, many improvements in their health after being on this vegetarian diet. Um, with the recent pandemic of swan flu and, and its current fatality rate <coughs> of 1,016 people across the nation. Now it's one, one something already today. Yes, yeah, you are a little bit outdated. Okay, every day it's, it's jumping up very fast now. You can't keep track anymore. Um, would you please share your thoughts on how to go about uniting all the doctors to speak the same language on the uh, benefits of vegan diet uh, in order to lessen the morbidity and mortality of human life as well as the life of the co-inhabitant? Thank you. I don't know, honey, truly. Not every doctor even, sadly, knows about the bad effect of the meat diet, for example. Hmm? I told you the other day, I went out and I went to the seaside, you know, had a little drink just for the sea breeze and the sun, you know, because every time if you're sick, you go to the sea, you get better. The people told me. I went there and I sit there and then there's, uh, of course, a restaurant, huh? They sell alcohol and the stuff, no? Nah? And then the owner sat and talked to us because there was no customer, not too much. And then uh, we talked something about like alcohol. He asked why we don't drink alcohol. He said, no, no, it's no good for us. And he said, oh, it's very bad. And well, he said, no, 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 no. You know what? I had a doctor. And uh, my friend has a trouble with the elbow or knees, whatever that is. It must be a joint. And uh, many years, and, and then my doctor told him drink one whiskey per day. Oh, my God, he must have taken some commission from the whiskey company. <laughs> I don't know how much. <laughs> or because he's selling alcohol, you know, so he's trying to convince us to drink. I don't know, but I don't believe it. I don't believe this thing. I say, okay, perhaps it cure your elbow, but it break your nerves and change your your well-being in the long run. It's uh, damaging your body and your cells and, yeah, your nerves and everything. Some of the tragic tolls of alcohol. 2.3 million alcohol-related deaths per year worldwide. Cost of alcohol-related illnesses. 186.4 billion U.S. dollars in the United States. Up to 210 to 665 billion U.S. dollars globally. Disease. Higher amounts of alcohol increase the cancer risk. Even half a glass of wine daily increases the risk of mouth or throat cancer by 168%. Cancer of the liver, breast, colon, esophagus, rectum. Liver disease. Cardiovascular disease. Metal toxicity. Brain damage. Amnesia and dementia. Brain shrinkage organ failure, heart, liver, kidneys, stomach, pancreas, eyes. Birth defects, children afflicted by anxiety and depression, mental retardation, fetal alcohol syndrome, stunted growth, facial deformity, sudden infant death syndrome, miscarriage. Alcohol-related violence, child abuse, 50% of cases. Violence toward loved ones, 30% of cases. Violent acts, 40 to 80% of cases. Suicides, 20 to 50% of cases. Plus more. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. For help quitting, please visit When I was married, né? my doctor, <laughs> he's always updating himself, yes, through seminars or whatever books he can get his hand on for new invention, yes, more modernized medicine and medical approach. But I don't know if every doctor do this. So nowadays, 
if a doctor has time, of course he can research into like harmful meat diet effect, nah? and then he can research into vegetarian benefit. But I don't know if doctors even have time to do that. You know, first he has to work a lot for internship, and then he has to either work for the big hospital, a busy, busy, huh? Even weekends sometimes have to work all 24 hours, nah? And then, of course, any doctor has been married, nah? Before he even become a doctor. That's for sure like that. He's more secure. <laughs> Most doctors are already occupied before, yeah? So if he's lucky, he has only a wife, you know? Like my husband yeah? has only a wife and uh, busy. But other doctors, they might have children as well, you know? And then he probably have a couple of dogs or maybe a cat or something as well. He like every of you, busy, busy. Yes? Oh, working from hospital and duty, on call and all that. And when he come home, he's tired already. And then he has to take care of his uh, wife and kids and all that, you know. I don't know if they have time to even do research. Yes? Do you? I did do research. I know, you are a good doctor. You are my disciple, different. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, I don't know what to do, truly. Uh, maybe you can write to them all, can you? Yeah, I, I did. I mm -hmm. emailed them a bunch of articles. If they have time to read also, you see what I mean? The thing is, this life truly makes us so busy. Eh? Not just doctor, anybody at all. But then, even if you write to all the doctors, how many can you write, you know? Maybe you can write to those in your province, yeah? Or maybe in your country, huh? But you have the name list? Yes, I do. The hospital where I work. Yeah, only to those doctors or the whole country? Well, I can get the list if I want. Then you write to your country doctor at least, no? Okay. Understand? <laughs> can you write to the whole world? The doctor in the whole world? No? I can try. Oh, if you can, and do that. Engage all the doctors, uh, initiates, or friends to do that for you. Oh, that's a lot of work, honey. I don't know how you do it. Hmm? How? Well, start small. Okay. Um, Hire um, secretary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there's somebody who, who has not much to do in your group, you ask her to help you. Give her the list and she do ten at a time or something. Or do email, no? It's better to send them mail through the mailbox. Yeah, I know. How you do that? I just find extra time to do it. <laughs> oh, Puka. I really admire you. Mm. No, if you can do it, then you do it. What else can we do? It's very, very, very difficult in this world, eh? <sighs> very difficult. But thanks for trying. Thanks Thank for trying. You, <sighs> you know, uh, as a doctor, you're busy, very busy, huh? Also have to pay back the loan, right? Yeah, and then you have to have a car, right? And you have to pay for the car and the insurance for the house or even apartment or everything. Everything costs money, huh? It's awesome how we live in this world, huh? So busy with children, family. And still go out and distribute the fly and all that, you know? I am really grateful to you. You're a good boy. <laughs> good boy, good girl, yeah? Uh, at home sometimes I want to say good boy, good girl, good dog, but I say good birds because I just came from the birds. <laughs> and I say good bird, and when I go to the birds, I say good dog, <laughs> good dog. <laughs> uh, yeah. Talking about that, I, I know I'm busy also, you know, my God. Group meditation here and a question and answer and letters and correspondence to government and all kind of things. And my dogs want me 24-7. They never get tired of me. They are never tired. <laughs> Whenever they see me, any chance, always, <laughs> you know, <laughs> lay on the back and with the four feet up and waiting for me to rub their tummy. Or talk sweet stuff like, oh, good boy, you, you good boy. And they love it when I list their attributes, you know, like, oh, you're very loyal, you're very loving, <laughs> you're very, very intelligent. Yes, 
You are very, very good-hearted. Yes. And you're really protective. Oh, okay. And they love it. And they just sit there forever, you know? And listen to, and look at me like, oh, there's no one else on this planet. And not one dog, huh? You know what I mean? It's like a big family I have. See, what I mean is everybody is so busy like that, huh? But we have it, so we go on with it, huh? What else can we do? This is very tiring sometimes, if you want to do everything good. Hmm? If uh, you have a soft heart, yes, it's more difficult than if you don't. How can I unite the doctor, hey? Yes. You have any more questions? Um, master scientists have now found that Venus was similar to Earth once before. Mm. Can you tell us if Venus also <coughs> suffered from global warming, and if so, why did they not manage to have enough vegans on their planet to save their planet? Hmm. Yeah. The similar situation mm -hmm. here, no? On this planet, for the moment, we're trying very hard and we have the Supreme Master Television worldwide like that. Many people know about it. Nowadays, it's easy to do research on the Internet about vegetarian diet and etc., etc. But still, some people don't do it. They just can't put it down. It's a habit. Also, people say meat is also addictive, like cigarette. <clears throat> probably less intense, but also addictive. That's what they told me, the people who eat meat, and people who do research on meat, they say like that too. Venus, yes, actually was once teeming with life, just like us. I have told Supreme Master Television once. I just wrote them a note and said, Venus is similar to Mars. It's just that uh, it's too much heated up because of pollution. Eh? Worse than Mars. Mars wasn't as bad as Venus. Venus was really, you know, catastrophic. Everything destroyed. No life at all whatsoever on there. No life at all. But you see, our world now is also getting like that. Just people don't believe it. They don't realize it until everything too overwhelmingly mm, catastrophic. Then it's too late. They don't get vegan. They just didn't believe it. You understand? Even if they knew it, it's too late for them to change or some did not believe it. Because, for example, right now, there are maybe 25 million people who are a refugee right now, climate refugee. But we don't see nothing here. Do we see anything? You see anything in England? Where are you from? United States? Okay. Did you see anything around where you live? No. You see? And if you go out or around a town or in your hospital even and tell other people, say, look, people already been displaced, became refugees because of climate change. It's really happening. It might be us next. Nobody would think about it, you know? Right now, we have swine flu. Everywhere people are sick and dying. And the official number is just one hundredth of the real number, yes? But uh, people still eat pork. People still raise pigs. The change is too slow. Yes, they're thinking about it. They're planning to close this and do that and limit it, but I don't see much happening because it doesn't concern them. The decision maker or the individuals, they don't see the effect of it. It's too far remote from where they live. For example, yeah? People who live next to a pig farm, for example, they complain about the bad smell. It gives them stomach problem, headache. Uh, poison and make them allergic to something or sick for life now, that they have to be dependent on some kind of medicine for life now. 
because of the pollution, because of the uh, whatever effect that comes from the pig farm nearby. It happened already. But you see, the people who live in the city don't see nothing like that. So maybe they know about it, they read on the newspaper about that, but they do nothing. They still continue to go to the supermarket and buy pork, yeah? And because they are buying, people are supplying. It just continues like that. It's not much we can do except what we're doing, yeah? That's why it's the same thing that happened with Venus. You understand why? It's so easy. It's so easy to destroy your planet. If nothing changes, our planet will become maybe like that. Maybe I either like Mars or like Venus. Oh, just uh, finished. I exploded or uninhabitable, everything kaput. Right now, it's still hanging in balance because we have more and more people join vegan diet. It's still hanging in there. But I don't know how long it hangs. You know, every day, at night, yeah, when everything's quiet, I really cry for people. Daytime, I'm busy, huh? I can switch it off. Nighttime, when I'm alone, I'm meditating, I see all the catastrophic situation. I see people suffer. I see animals suffer. I just keep crying. And my heart is in so much pain. Sometimes I don't know how to switch it off. I want it to, but sometimes I can. Just have to go on working, eh? And hoping for the best. All right, thank you. Let's hope we can still make it, hey? Some of the diseases related to meat consumption and or production, rabies, anthrax, sleeping sickness, Q fever, norovirus, swine flu, Ebola reston virus. Cured meats and fish increase leukemia risk in children. Antibiotic resistant superbug infections from a strain of Staphylococcus aureus blue tongue disease, E. coli, salmonella, bird flu, mad cow disease or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk, pig's disease or PMWS, listeriosis, shellfish poisoning, preeclampsia, campylobacter, clostridium difficile, diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock, some of the costs of meat eating, Infertility, eating just one serving of meat per day, increases the risk of women's infertility by 32%, with additional meat consumption increasing the risk. Heart disease. Over 17 million lives lost globally each year. Cost of cardiovascular disease is at least 1 trillion US dollars a year. Cancer. Increased childhood cancers and adult reproductive cancers from hormones in meat. Colon rectal cancer. Over one million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer related mortalities annually. In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. Millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat related cancers every year. Diabetes. 246 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment in just the United States. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight with 400 million more who are obese. Costs 93 billion US dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental uses up to 70% of clean water, pollutes most of the water bodies, deforests the lungs of the earth, uses up to 43% of the world's cereal, uses up to 85% of the world's soy, causes world hunger and wars, 80% cause of global warming, plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption. Cowpox from milking cows. Bacterial microbes, pesticides and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals. Up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat. 
Breast, prostate and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk, hysteria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat leads to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes and heart disease, linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis, classified as a major allergen, lactose intolerance, plus more. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. For help quitting, please visit People just have to learn quick, you know? They learn, but they learn too slow. It's one thing to know. Another thing is to put it into practice. It's one thing to know vegetarian is good and healthy and all that, but another thing is to do it, yeah? It's not easy for people because they're so blindfolded, brainwashed, and so deep into some bad habits because they have been taught that meat is good for them. Milk is good for them. You know, you just carry on with your life every day and you trust it that your doctors know best and the scientists know best and the government take care and everybody, they have, they have different jobs to do, you know, the Department of Health, and they will tell us what, what, what. Eh? Uh, we pay them to do it. We trusted them. And now we got into this deep habit we can't get out. And they don't even want to tell us now even, because they also are into the habit. They can't tell people to eat vegetarian when they don't eat it themselves, when they could not quit. It's a big network, you know? Like, okay, the pig farmer get fertilizer from the pig or something to the other farmer, and the other farmer get this, and they're exchanging things. And sometimes the meat industry is very rich and they support somebody, you know, and then they are owning each other things. Nobody <laughs> can open their mouth because they're in it. They are in it together. Maybe they realize it now, but they also wanted to do it, to change it, but they can't do it too fast. You see, it may offend their benefactor, their supporter. Eh? Even I tell you what, some people told me that some of the soccer gurus yeah, or some master, they don't dare to emphasize too much. They don't tell them to eat vegetarian too much, the followers, because they're worried if they say that, everybody will leave them. So they just keep quiet, and whoever eats is good, and whoever don't eat, they don't care. They don't make it into a rule. It's like that. I also know that, but I don't care. I'm here to tell the truth. I'm not here to collect disciples. That is the only reason why I'm so strict with you. And if you're not keeping the rule, then you are out. I'm sorry, sayonara. I'm here to tell you the truth at all cost. I'm not here to please people. I'm not here to please you. I'm not here to put sugar on your poison pill. Yeah? If it's poison, I tell you it's poison. You like it or not? That's your problem. Not every master tell you everything. Even some master already know that vegetarian should be good. They don't emphasize it. Just let it be like it's a blur line, you know? You call it blur line? The blur. Very blur line. It's not correct, not black, not white. Here, black, white. Yeah, you know that. That's why some of you, if after initiation, if you come back to eat meat and all that, I won't let you come in. You know it before even. Before you got initiation, you know that, right? So by us, it's black and white. There's no blur line in between. If everyone do this, then after a while, people get used to it, you know? They follow. But if you don't give a clear line of a leadership, of a direction, and people also, okay, I go here, I go there, why not? You know, master don't say anything. Yeah, why bother? You see what I mean? So either we go or we don't go. In our group, it's like that. So now you, you cannot blame me for being strict, huh? Now you know why, huh? See? Hmm. Why should I cheat you, yeah? What do I get from telling you the things that is not good for you? What do I get? Hmm? 
Well, what for? I have a lot of disciples who do what? <laughs> I don't need money from you. I don't need a big temple. I pay for everything. If you have money, you pay some for your food. If you don't have, you don't pay. I don't need anything. Why, for any reason, should I lead you into the wrong direction or give you the wrong impression? You see what I mean? That's why I put myself in the situation of no need to begin with, so that I don't ever, ever have a chance, any risk to compromise the truth, to compromise the principle, to compromise the direction that everyone should go for their own good. See that? No. That's also the reason I told you to be independent, yeah? So you don't even take gift from anybody, don't own anyone anything, so that you can walk straight, walk tall, decide your life, understand? Without having any favor from anybody, without having any influence on you, on your good decision. Got it? Okay? Good. Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet lowers blood pressure, lowers cholesterol levels, reduces type 2 diabetes, prevents stroke conditions, reverses atherosclerosis, reduces heart disease risk 50%, reduces heart surgery risk 80%, prevents many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increases life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, saves 70% of the total cost of 40 trillion US dollars for reducing global warming, uses 4.5 times less land to grow food, conserves up to 70% clean water, saves 80% of the cleared Amazonian rainforest from animal grazing, a solution for world hunger, Free up 3.4 billion hectares of land. Free up 760 million tons of grain every year. Half the world's grain supply. Consumes one-third fossil fuels of those used for meat production. Reduces pollution from untreated animal waste. Maintains cleaner air. Saves 4.5 tons of emissions per U.S. household per year. Stop 80% of global warming plus more. Hi, Master. Thank Hi. you for coming to see us. Mm, you're um, welcome. Is it possible to become a breatharian in some polluted area, like in a big city? Is there any technique to learn to become a breatharian? Or is it enough to just remind myself now I want to become a breatharian. If uh, you want to try breatharian, I suggest you find somebody who is already on that path to guide you. Yeah, okay? I'm not here to teach you breatharian at all. All right? Yes. But you can try, yeah? Try only as far as you go. If it doesn't go, then you have to stop. That's it. Very simple. All right? Mm. Find some guidance, yeah? Some experts. I'm sure there are plenty nowadays on the internet, no? Mm. We have shown some people even on the Supreme Master Television. I guess it's possible, because last week we saw Dr. Moore, yeah? Barbara Moore. She lives in a big city also, yeah? She lives in England. Of course she went to the Swiss app to, to do skiing and take a fresh air and all that. And she found that it's easier to be breatharian there, you see? Over there she just eats snow and drinks snow water. It's cleaner there, see? Clean air and everything. So she could go without food for many months. And when she go back to the city, I heard that she found it more difficult. And then she has to go slowly from less food, less food, less food, eh? and then to raw food and tasteless food, and then slowly, slowly. Yeah, become used to it. And she walks all over, you see? So I don't think she just walks in a small countryside. She walks all over the planet, so it was in a big city as well. Hmm? And there was a, a nun in Taiwan. When I was in Taiwan, I met her. She hasn't eaten 
for 20 years. She just drink like a glass of water per day. Yes. But the glass of water has been blessed, you know, with the Tabai Chou. Tabai Chou is one of the Buddhist short form of a powerful mantra. Yeah? Mm. So they bless the water with that and then drink it. Yeah. So she wasn't living in like a remote area when I saw her. It was like very near the street. And Taiwan is very small. You don't have a remote area unless you go to very deep mountain inside. You know, I was there. I went to very deep mountain. You have to cross like three times the river and a couple of mountains. Then maybe you go into some area where there are no cars and not too much pollution. Yeah? But then after that, she did go into deep mountain, yes? But after that, she went back to the city. Not the kind of big city like Taipei, a little bit farther, but still, it's not in remote mountain. So I guess it's possible. Once you're strong enough, you live anywhere, huh? And there's another uh, monk I knew in Korea. He also eat ice only. Maybe sometimes ice cream, but they eat only ice. <laughs> They told me like that. And this monk also live anywhere, you know? He also doesn't just live in a mountain. He walks around and he integrates with people. So I guess it's possible. Hmm? There's a possibility, according to what I have seen huh? or known, but everyone is different, okay? If you want to try, you need guidance, yeah? Or do it until you cannot, okay? You cannot wait until you're dying. Yeah? Hmm? I have to see, listen to your body, okay? All right. Thank That's you. it? Okay, good. You happy? Good. Okay. When you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> Everybody happy? You're so young and doctor already, what kind? I'm a surgical doctor. Surgical? Wow. I graduated from my uh -huh. fourth year. Oh, okay, okay. Very good. Congratulations. Congratulations. Here, this is for your celebration, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Everybody okay? Yes. Good. Oh, welcome home, huh? I'm most dear master. Um, I recently came to hear about some great news. Mm. Turkey and Armenia, they want to renew ties after being separated by the border. Um, the two countries want to cease hostilities after about um, 15 years. So um, Switzerland helped them to towards a new relationship. Wow. They had announced that within six weeks the peace protocols um, will be signed and then it takes two months to open the border. Um, the friendship will benefit both countries, like Turkey will have better conditions to join the European Parliament mm. and Armenia will enlarge their market. Everybody welcome that. Especially the United States even stated they warmly welcome the statement about the normalization of their relation. Wow, me too, I welcome. <laughs> you welcome? Yes. Everybody welcome? Good, another round. <laughs> These two countries, you know, they have been. Uh, almost art enemy for a long time. It's about time that they make friends, yeah? And especially if uh, it's a nearby, you know, neighbors, yeah. Okay, bravo. Very good news. Most benevolent master, we have some good news uh, from Sweden to share with the master and everyone. Okay. The Swedish government promotes environmentally friendly food choices. So recently, the Swedish National Food Administration and the Environmental 
Protection Agency published a document. It's like a, a dietary guide. Uh, it's called the Environmentally Effective Food Choices. Oh, okay. It's like a dietary guide. For example, it says in the document, do you want to eat intelligently for the environment and wow. for your health? Intelligently? Yeah. I like and that. <laughs> recommend people to reduce their meat consumption, to reduce the release of uh, greenhouse gases, and to live healthier, and also uh, save the rainforest as well. Good. Yeah. Very smart government. Oh, yeah. another round of applause. Yeah. That's what I call government. Yeah. 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 In Vietnam, they say, chan tri. In China, they call it cheng chi. Cheng chi means righteous, governing, righteous uh, leadership. Yeah? So that's what I call cheng chi. Yeah. yeah. Cheng. Right. Yeah. Correct. Very good. Yeah, very good. That was fast. I yeah. like that. Well, not fast enough. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, for government, that pretty fast already. Faster than other governments, at least, huh? Bravo. You live in Sweden? Yeah. Mm. Lucky girl, lucky yeah. girl. I probably also moved to Sweden because <laughs> oh, at least they listen. <laughs> and this document has been sent as a proposal to uh, notify to the European Union for other EU countries' uh, reference as well. Oh, yeah. Maybe they all look at it, huh? Yeah. So simple, just a switch, switch, huh? Hmm, just switch. Switch diet. Uh, yesterday I wear red, today I wear violet. What's wrong with that, huh? Why do we wear red every day? Especially red meat. And wear it on your lips even. The blood coming out, oozing out of it. Bah. Someday it raw, you know, when they eat the blood comes out. The lion, you know? Lions or the tiger. When they're hungry, they go hunting for prey, huh? They eat some other smaller animals or bigger animals. But in China we call them Ye Shou. Ah, Chinese. Ye Shou. E Shou. E Ato. Uh, Vietnamese called Akto. Ersho Akto means a vicious animal. Terrible. Bad boy. And what are we? Huh? What are we? <laughs> what are we if we also go out and catch a chicken and chop chop? Eat. Huh? The lions, the tiger, they have no choice, no? They can't grow vegetable, can they? No. We have choice. The lions, the tiger, they don't have much choice. But we have choice. We have tofu, we have fruits, we have nuts, we have beans, we have all kind of very delectable, nutritious food in the vegetable kingdom. So if we call the tigers and the lions <laughs> a show, I mean, vicious animals. Vicious. Ah, uh, oh, I mean, ah, uh, well, beast even. Beast, not animals even. I'm too used to it being polite and mild, you know, have to be positive, you know. <laughs> so the English call them wild beast. Yeah. Oh, vicious beast, right? Yeah. And what shall we call ourselves? <laughs> you understand? We do the same. Worse, we do worse than the same. We invented all kind of machine, all kind of instrument, yeah, to kill billions of animals at the same time, hundreds of thousands at the same time, hanging them upside down, inside out, slaying them alive. Oh, God, whenever I see it on TV, I, I, I can't, I can't bear it. So maybe if we want to continue to eat meat. Then we have to make another new definition about the human <laughs> who eats meat. Huh? Maybe stand next in line with the tiger and the lion. Huh? What do we call them? What will we call ourselves? Domesticated 
domesticated bees. <laughs> but a beast is a beast, right? Domesticated sounds so peaceful. <laughs> In America, they call the house broken. <laughs> After you train a dog and a puppy when you brought home, and you train him to go where and where to do his business, and you call them house broken. <laughs> I don't know why house broken. Bring a dog home and break your house. <laughs> it's funny, you know, they use the, this kind of term. Okay, domesticated, huh? Domesticated beasts in their unnatural habitat. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> because beasts are supposed to go in the jungle, huh? live in cave, subsisted on whatever beasts, other animals they can find, and drink water from the stream, and, you know, the, stay in a grotto. So we should reconsider our position on the planet. Hmm? Maybe that's why the weather is warming. And I saw it on Supreme Master Television that the Canadian government reserved almost like $70 million to um, subsidize for the pig farmer or pork farm. For the porkers. <laughs> I mean, the one who keeps the pork to change. Yeah, change the position. But the uh, last uh, couple of years, um, uh, I heard that uh, many percentage of them had to change position anyway, because pork business is going to the pork, you know? Yeah. I was just thinking while we were talking that maybe the reason why we have this destruction on our planet right now, yeah? And it's going to be more destruction. I guess because when heaven looks down upon us, you know, and see that we behave like the beast, yeah, like the lions and the tiger. So heaven thinking, oh, then they don't need house, they don't need clean water, they should go in jungle and go find water in a small puddle or pond. Or a cravage somewhere. You see, whatever we do will uh, breed another kind of consequence or reaction. Yeah? So if we don't want to live like the tiger and the lions, then we have to behave not like a tiger and not like a lion. I guess also that's the reason, huh? As you sow, so shall you reap, no? Mm. And uh, Jesus said, you don't even need to pray, because your Father in heaven would know what you want before you even ask. Is that right in the Bible? So when the Father or the manager from heaven looked down and said, oh, they like to be like tiger and lion, they like to live like that. Their behavior is like that. So let's uh, <laughs> remake the, the earth, you know? And then uh, make it all like a wilderness again. And then they can go and live the life of a tiger and a lion, the way their heart desired. Because look like the action bespeak what they wanted in their heart. You know what I mean? Hmm. I'm just guessing. Forgive me if I offend anybody. Forgive me. I'm guessing, guessing. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, possible, you know? Yeah? It is like that in the universal law, according to my humble knowledge, that whatever we want, we will have it eventually. That's why there's a saying, beware of what you ask for, yeah? Beware of your wish, yeah? Because whatever you wish eventually will come true. It takes longer or shorter time. Even if we don't wish consciously in our mind, but if our interrelated actions 
bespeaks certain manner of life or certain degree of consciousness, then our life would eventually change or alter to suit that kind of action. Do you understand me? It's just a natural law. So if our action doesn't bespeak the dignity and the position of the children of God, then I'm afraid heaven would also react yeah, according to our wish and try to accommodate us in some way so that our wish can come true. Because our action, no matter on purpose or not, it always reflects the inner consciousness, the subconscious also. And the subconsciousness is always visible to all beings on all the universe. So if we do things not according to our status, then life will change, situations will change to suit our new action, new choice. You probably ask me why people eat meat, you know? And uh, since childhood already, and they don't die, or they don't get sick, or they don't die so quick. But they do get sick. That's why we built a lot of hospitals. Yeah? Most of the people who go to hospitals are meat eaters. Yeah? Alcohol drinker, cigarette smoker, or drug user. Normal people, the vegetarian people, don't go there often. Yes? Or hardly, rarely, or none. Yeah? So the reason why the human eats a lot of meat before and don't die immediately, although it should destroy our organs, you know, quickly make our heart decrease in our ability and lung and all kind of sickness, yeah, as you know, hmm? scientifically proven and medically as proven as well. The reason is that because as human, we had in former life accumulated a lot of merit already in order to be born as a human, yes? So we must have some leftover merit, you know, either for happiness, for health, for wealth, or any other things, a position in the society, success in some way. So we have to continue to live even though we eat poison in order to fulfill our purpose in life of the give and take. Yes, but because we do not continue to make more merit, and instead we use up all the store merit, and then we make new, worse karma, worse uh, um, actions, yeah, that will breed bad retribution. Therefore, we have dead half alive, continue to live and struggle until truly we run out of the merit in the store and the bad karma that we created a new pound upon us, then either we are very, very sick or we die. You got me? Yes. If we did not have the merit in the store, yeah, then we could not even be born as human. Hmm? Human is a very complex uh, physical, a structure which house not only the physical, but the mental, the emotional, the psychological, the psychic bodies and ability, etc., etc., hmm? and the divine power to boot. But, you see, if we don't keep the merit running, then we will be cut short. That's why some of you often ask me, uh, why some people die too early, some people die young, and it seems like they didn't do anything wrong at all in their life. It is probably meat that killed them. You see, or cigarette, or drug, alcohol. These are the things that's no good for us. If we want to live, we should never even look at those things. 
look, not even. If we, we treasure the body and want to be healthy until the day our time is up and we go, then we should never even mention the word alcohol, drug, meat, yeah, cigarette. These things kill us quickly. But the reason why a lot of people ask me, why some people smoke and they live longer? Yeah, and some people don't ever smoke. <laughs> live shorter life. That is because other factors kill them, yeah? Maybe they eat too much meat or they drink alcohol or drug or other things or indulge in bad negative tendency or thinking, yeah. Or the merit of human life has run out, yeah, okay. And they did not earn any more, that's why, or they destroy it. Maybe, just like if you have one hundred dollars, it's supposed to last you three days, yes? But if you squander it all in five minutes, it's also possible. One minute even possible, yes. But if you more spare some and you know how to economize, it lasts maybe longer than three days. Hmm? Some people buy expensive stuff or don't know what to buy and then I wasted the money. Some people know how and the money lasts longer, yeah? Or you can invest in the bank. That's like earning new merit instead of spending it all. Okay, right. Now you know all the answers, okay? Mm. All right. Some of the tragic tolls of tobacco, 5.4 million smoking-related deaths per year worldwide, cost of smoking-related illnesses, 96 billion U.S. dollars in the United States alone, depression, light and mild cigarettes just as harmful, causes cancer and diseases in animal companions, speeds the aging process, toxic residues of third-hand smoke, heart disease, coronary thrombosis, cerebral thrombosis, kidney failure. Cancer, mouth, liver, breast and colorectal cancer, lung cancer, esophagus cancer, kidneys cancer, bladder cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema, bronchitis. Stroke, impotence, additional harms for secondhand smoking, childhood arteriosclerosis, leading to heart attacks and strokes in adulthood. Sudden infant death syndrome, infertility, miscarriages and premature deliveries, childhood asthma, bronchitis, ear infection, cleft lip or palate, hyperactivity and aggression in asthmatic boys, circulatory problems in women, plus more. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. For help quitting, please visit Some of the tragic tolls of addictive drug abuse. Over 200,000 deaths each year. Costs of 181 billion US dollars each year in the United States. 33 billion US dollars in the UK. Lifetime cost of current drug addiction amounts to 575 billion US dollars in the UK. Harmful effects, brain damage, stroke, heart disease, liver disease, tuberculosis, emphysema, cancer, depression, suicide, permanent memory loss, mental illness, higher infant mortality, increased crime and violence, impotence. Crime and violence. Illegal drugs are a factor in 50% of burglaries in the United Kingdom each year. In the U.S., 60% of people arrested each year have been taking illegal drugs. 650 heroin addicts in the U.S. committed 70,000 crimes in a three-month period. Social costs. U.S. businesses lose 100 billion U.S. dollars per year due to employees' drug and alcohol abuse. Australians pay 53 billion U.S. dollars per year for health care, law enforcement, and lost productivity of drug users. Environmental costs. 
Every gram of cocaine produced destroys 4.4 square meters of rainforest, with 300,000 hectares of rainforest lost each year to cocaine production. Death, 52 people die each day due to drugs in the U.S. In Canada, substance abuse is attributed to 21% of total deaths and 23% of potential life years lost due to early mortalities. Plus more. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. For help quitting, please visit Master, in USA, state of Oklahoma, the scientists have studied, uh, mentioned that there's about 20% of the watermelon left in the field after the crops has harvest. Yeah. Um, it contains about 7 to 10% of the sugars that can be recyclable to the biofuels. Yes. That we can use for our vehicles in the future, which yes. is a re really great news. Uh-huh. And that was the American have found. Okay. You know, sure. then, then I would right. hope that the whole world will start using those kind of biofuels. Planting. <laughs> <laughs> planting watermelon. <laughs> They're planting watermelon, but this uh, is the one that they don't yeah, even yeah, need it. Yeah. The one that was, you know, trash out in the field that they don't oh, even use. The, the, the so they're the, yeah. using the, the watermelon juice master ah, to wonderful. make the biofuels. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Good news. Good news, yes. Not only watermelons, there are many other... Melons or juice can also be converted, even trash, you know, grass, anything, really. Just, we need time. We need time before we can have all this invention to be produced for the large market. You see what I mean? Uh, we need time. And in order to have time, we must save the planet first. And to save the planet, we must be veg. Hmm? Be compassionate. Yeah, love the animals so we don't eat meat. Love the world people so we want to save the world people. Even if we have to sacrifice, we would do it. But quitting meat is not a sacrifice. It's a benefiting action for ourselves also. Yeah. First of all, we benefit if we are vegetarian. But I don't know why such a simple thing <laughs> takes so long for people to assimilate. Even the people who already know about the benefit of vegetarian diet and the harm of the meat diet. I don't know why it's so difficult to quit that piece of meat and instead put a piece of tofu or vegetable protein in it. Yeah. Instead of meat. It's just truly just a question of habit. If you don't see it after a few weeks, you don't miss it at all. Maybe you miss it in the first week or two weeks. But after you don't ever see it again, you don't want it. You don't miss it, and you don't even want it. Then it becomes easy. So the main point is just don't buy meat. And then the farmers never raise meat again. That's it. And then everybody can be happily vegan. Yeah. Why didn't we do it earlier? We feel so good now. Yeah. Yeah, healthy, yeah? More energetic, clearer mind, yeah? And feel more love in the heart. We see the animal, we just feel love so much. We don't even want to think of harming them, not to talk about actually harming them. Love them so much. Truly, it's like that. Mm. Talking about animals, we um, encounter more and more animal communicators everywhere. Yeah. And also um, filming some... Uh, just the past uh, two weeks, we went to Salzburg to um, film an uh, animal communicator. Uh -huh. And you I just what? wanted to report um, one of her dogs said that he gave us a message and he said that um, he's aware of the planetary problems. Oh, but of he, course he is. Yes. He says that recently um, there were some changes and he thinks now there will be a positive outcome. Yeah, so he, I still have that point of hope. It's a small point of hope that everybody will yeah. be vegan, vegetarian at least. I'm having that all the time. So he said that it will be okay? Yeah, he hope. said that he... He, um, he can see the was future? A, yeah, there was a change recently and he thinks that um, we'll make it. 
We will make it? Yeah. Everybody can make it? <laughs> cool. cool stuff. Mm -hmm. A few days ago, I told the doctors and his wife, oh, I still have that point of hope. Very strong. I mean, small point, but strong. I don't know how, because let's face it, you go outside, how many restaurants are vegan? Yes? And you go in the airport, how many people eat vegan or vegetarian? I mean, for me, vegetarian means no animal product, eh? and vegan, no killing, eh? and same. And you walk outside on the street, eh? you see, still meat everywhere. And how can I have this point of positive feeling? I don't know. But uh, it costs me nothing, so I keep it. <laughs> it costs me nothing. <laughs> To, to have positive feeling, huh? uh, that little point, I hold on to it. <laughs> Put it in <a> pocket. <laughs> Don't let it go. Yeah. And because we're encountering all these um, animal communicators, our disciples also um, consult them a lot mm. now. And um, nearly all of our animals from the disciples, all the animals, um, they say that they either want to watch uh, SMTV or they want to have a picture of you next to them. Yeah, they asked for it, and one of the bunnies, he, um, he wanted to go on SMTV. He says he has a message for SMTV, but it will be a show. Oh, really? Oh. It. And he also said, and all of you, all of you, you don't think enough of God. You, you not, and you not, and you all don't wow. think enough of God. Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very Yeah, funny. it's true also, huh? It's true. Too busy, huh? Yeah. Our um, companions, hmm. that, um, they always say that you are the master of their clan. Who say that? The dog? The, the rabbit. The rabbit. I'm, and their clan now? <laughs> yeah. oh. They say that the clan of the soft pole. Because you are everywhere. Animals recognize you as, as their master. They do? Yeah. Animals, humans are the same. Just animals, they are more receptive. They are more open. You see? They are more in contact with the divine than uh, many of us humans. Many of us humans have to be awakened first in order to recognize the divine within us. But the animals, they don't lose it. Just like uh, when we're born up to the year three, four years old, many of the humans' infants still remember God very well. They talk to God every day, communicate every day, and then they start losing it. The more meat they shove into their mouth, the less they remember God, and then it's faded until they grow up, don't remember at all. Most of the animals are always in contact with the divine. Yes. Even vicious animals, not all of them are vicious. They were born into that vicious so-called gene pool, DNA pool, but they don't act viciously, yes? Some of the wild tiger, they even it just root and shoot, or lions also. And if lions and tigers have a chance to be vegetarian, they are very willing. We had many uh, examples. Yeah, there's one in the book of Yogananda, autobiography of a yogi. Yeah, okay. So now, just like dogs, you see, they have fangs and all that. If in the wild they would have to chase the rabbits or other animals to eat. But uh, when they come to your household or mine, they eat vegetarian. They don't even want meat. I told you, uh, my dog, Lucky, I just adopted him not long, you know, and we had to rush him from one doctor to another, just like immediately, because he's rotten from head to toe. He smelled terrible, even after we washed him three, four times already. All his teeth were rotten, he could not chew. And because of that, it's infected his whole body, you know. His body was all red, you know. That's why I dyed his color. In the beginning, I dyed red, so it matched. I was worried the doctor wouldn't take him because he had red patch everywhere. It didn't look like one, one unified color, you know. I worried the doctor wouldn't like him. So I dyed him with fruit color, you know. I put uh, uh, green nut, apple juice, <laughs> uh, carrot juice. <laughs> Uh, strawberry juice, <laughs> all this kind of stuff. Apricot, 
color, you know, I made in apricot. I call him apricot boo boo. <laughs> okay. But when he was in the hospital, after he got out of, of, of anesthesia, you know, the doctor gave him meat, he didn't eat it. He didn't want it. He did not touch it at all. And then we had to bring him veggie food. And then we said, okay, please eat it, otherwise the doctor won't let you go home. And then he jumped on it. Eat. <laughs> yeah. And later the doctor said, oh, you eat? I didn't see you eat. Can you eat again? And then he eat again. Yeah, like that. Yeah, they don't want meat, truly. Even uh, some vegan stinky fish, you know, that I don't like because it was too stinky, so real, like when you go to the supermarket, you smell it, I don't want to eat it. Even though I know it's a fake, you know, and they also don't eat. <laughs> I thought, my God, aren't you guys picky? Huh? <laughs> I thought the dogs, they don't mind, you know, so I thought, okay, whatever, we don't eat, let's give it to the dogs. And they smell it, and then they don't eat. And you know, my dogs, they eat absolutely everything. Everything that I eat, they eat. They never say no, especially Hamid, you know, and Happy. She eats everything that she can see. Even that she doesn't eat. Doesn't eat because it's thing, like the real fish. Tell you, truly, if we uh, raise our animals vegetarian, they will do it. They will eat it gladly, gladly, yes. And their temper will be so pliant, you know, much less aggressive. You see, in the Bible, we have a vision of the, uh, the lion lay next to the lamb, remember? Well, if we want that, then we should also lay next to the lamb first, no? Yeah. We don't even have fang, see? That means we, sh- we are not vicious type of being, at least apparently not. So why do we act like one, huh? See, all my dogs are vegan. <laughs> European Parliament supports reducing meat to lower greenhouse gases. Call vote. Vote is now open. Reduce your meat consumption or stop eating meat totally. During discussions on greenhouse gas reduction goals, the Climate Committee of the European Parliament officially recognized livestock's contribution to global warming and recommended a reduction of subsidies to the livestock industry to curb methane. The European Parliament has adopted its own position on climate change as an institution and as a Vice President. One of the proposals I have made is in line with your own, which is that we should eat far less meat because that's one of the major sources of greenhouse gases. Massentierhaltung zum Beispiel ist ein großes Problem. Der Fleischkonsum in gerade auch den reichen Ländern des Nordens ist für das Klima nicht gut. Please eat less meat and let's make taxes on meat. That's definitely one of the issues we're talking about. I'd like to tell people what the cost is of eating meat for the environment worldwide. My name is Jens Holm. I'm a member of the European Parliament. Please, be veg, go green to save the planet. While sharing the veg news, we encounter also a lot of inspiring people. And um, it seems like that these are saints everywhere um, popping up everywhere. And it seems like that they have been quietly following the game of the world. Yeah. And now suddenly they all come popping yeah. up. Yeah. And then sh- now um, working and putting all the efforts into changing the world. Yeah. It so seems it that like, way also yeah. to me. Wonderful. Good. Good news, yes. I met a vegetarian guy at the airport, a security man. I went to London, huh? because uh, I was invited to some party, yeah, with some royalty. And uh, I was uh, at the airport. 
and they were checking very, very vigorously. I went to the airport with just a one small handbag and a small uh, hand luggage, yeah? trolley luggage. And of course I have to go through security checks. Uh. One security man checked before the, the machine, even. Normally you just go through the machine, that's enough, right? And I look at him and he seemed like an old man, not young, but his skin is so good, you know, his eyes sparkling, so pinky pinky, yeah? healthy. So I said, wow, you look very healthy and handsome hmm. and very gentle for a security man, after he checked me already. And then I was going, so I can afford to say that, you know. <laughs> but I really meant it, you know, because he was very pleasant, you know, for a security man. So he went next to my ear. He said, I'm vegetarian. <laughs> I don't know why he has to talk into my ears. He whispered, you know? And then I said, oh, really? Wow, that's nice. Uh, you see uh, the thing you asked me before, the sandwich in my bag? That's because I'm vegan. I don't eat uh, meat, so I cannot buy anything around here. That's why I, I pack my own sandwich. He said, ah, I know, I know, I know. I saw it. And, uh, and then I said, can I give you, you a hug then? <laughs> I was so surprised and happy, you know. So he gave me a big hug. Ah. And then he kept looking at me all the time until he don't see me no more. And waving, waving. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they pop up everywhere. Yeah, and one time I went past a country, Croatia, passed by. Mm. And then we went into pump gas. Mm. I have a hybrid car. It needs just a little gas. And it goes very long, but still needs a little gas. Okay, we go in there and get gas and buy some drink. You meanwhile, you know, it's a long drive. And because the light is on and the door is open in the gas station, there are some bugs laying on the ground at the door before the outside, it's right next to the inside door. So I quickly tried to find something, a paper, you know, and I tried to get him out. I said, get out, quick, quick, before they step on you. And then the people were so many, you know, so they just all stopped, you know, because they saw me doing that. So they all stopped inside the door. And then quickly I scooped them, you know, one by one and quickly out. And they do wait for me. I went in, you know, pay for the gas and I asked if I, want to buy something. Mostly in my car, there's always some cakes and cookies. So when I pass by a police station, a checkpoint, you know, or toy booth, yeah? I always give something, yeah? Fruit or cakes or some drink together, yeah? Just to have a smile, yeah? So I asked, I cannot read this. You speak English? I say yes. Can you tell me if there's any egg or milk in it? Because I don't buy meat. I'm vegan. I don't take any animal things. So she said, yeah, I saw. I saw you saving the bugs. I know. <laughs> yes. And she said, I'm vegetarian too. Uh -huh. She's the owner of the station. Yes. And then, oh, I was so happy I had to hug her also. <laughs> but she complained to me. She said, Oh, you know, it's very difficult to be vegetarian here in this country. How about in your country? I said, oh, my country? Oh, everywhere is okay. <laughs> I have a country without borders, you know. So it's okay in my country here, everything okay. Everybody is supportive and vegetarian. She say, I'm very alone here with my child. Only both of us vegetarian around here. But I said, oh, you are a good girl. Both of you are good girl, good girl. Don't worry about it. And I give them an address in a Croatia, you know, center. You go there, people support you a lot, don't worry. In the capital, you know, our center in Croatia. Yeah, and then she was happy in there. And then I bought a lot of those vegan cakes and <laughs> stuff. And then I give some to her. She said, no, no, I can't accept it. I said, that's okay, not much, it's just for friendship. She said, okay then, okay, I give to my kid. And then the other guy said, can I have one? I said, of course, of course, <laughs> of course. 
And then he also said, oh, you are the best. He said about his boss. I said, yes, she's the best. And then we got talking, and she said, tomorrow, next day, she take her child to an animal shelter so that she learned to take care of some of animals, you know, volunteer. They're saving some wild deer or wild bear or something like that. I said, oh, in that case, can you please help me to save some? So I took out whatever money I have, I give it to her. She said, oh, this is too much, too much, I cannot accept. I said, it's not for you, for the animals. <laughs> you cannot refuse, you don't have the right to, it's for them. And then she said, oh, that's right, that's right. But I promise you I would do it just for animals. I said, I know, I know, I know, you don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to say anything, I know everything. Yeah, you would do it for the animals, of course. First, it's very difficult to give, but later she accepts, no? And once she accepts, I go in the car, get some more, you know. I wrap it in a tissue, and I give it together with the address. I say, open later. <laughs> and then I run, you know, I'm afraid she will make a lot of ado in front of everybody. <laughs> and that was really nice. You're right, they pop up everywhere. Everywhere you go, it's suddenly like that. Yeah? Even the security man. I asked how old he is, he said he's uh, uh, almost 50, but he looked very young, healthy, you know, pinky. And uh, probably he thinks, you know, that uh, if he say it, people will not uh, welcome him into security job because they think security man must be, you know, tattoo <laughs> muscular. <laughs> like this, no? <laughs> so if it's vegetarian, how can, you know? How can I have muscle and strength to do anything, you know? They don't know. And how do I still have this point of positive feeling? Uh, well, I tell you, since it costs me nothing, I keep it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel good and going, yeah? Keep me going. Yeah, any more good news? Because you make me inspired, you know? <laughs> you make me feel very inspired. 最亲爱的师傅，长期以来，在在我们这个地球上，呃，人们还是需要非常努力的去挣钱来维持生活。嗯，那我的问题是，呃，在上帝的恩典、加持和推动之下，嗯、呃，我们的地球得救之后，那人们的经济生活会是什么样子的？还不晓得呢，<笑>就再说嘛，啊。我们现在努力就再说了，那个事情以后<笑>不是现在要谈的 ，OK？ 哎呀，救了就知道嘛，哈，啊，人那个灵神体生了以后，自然就会好，自然就会想到别的办法，自然会发明很多好的办法，可以把我们地球的经济啊更增加，更有活力，更舒服，更顺。那、啊、如果人呐、啊、都是想救别人、想救地球啊，已经有仁者的心了，想救自己、想救自己的亲戚朋友哈、家庭，就已经有仁者了。所以有仁者的那种，呃，精神哈、灵灵神哈，呃，一定会改变我们那个地球的那个元气。然后，那个气氛如果改善了哈，都很多东西会改的。我们。聊不完，他突然会改，我们聊不完，啊，等着看啊 ，surprise，OK，、okay? <笑>先救地球，后来再谈，呀、yeah, ，OK， 救地球了以后就不用再谈，不用再担心别的事了，他自然会好，就跟你们一样嘛，哈，你们那个肉快丢了，哈，跟着师傅吃素，那生活是不是改变了？啊，改变很好啊，是不是？啊，有的多，有的少。多的为了修行好，信心高强；少的为了偷懒啊。<笑>不过啊，啊，还是有改变很多。那个一小部分自己而已，何况整个地球，他们的精神改变呢？能不能想象那个力量多大？那个 positive energy， 肯定的那个力量多大？所以现在我们不要问了。等一下就知道了。如果救完了以后就知道了，我们就会知道了哈，就不用担心。Vegetarianism in religion. 
the Baha'i Faith regarding the eating of animal flesh and abstinence therefrom. Know thou of a certainty that, in the beginning of creation, God determined the food of every living being, and to eat contrary to that determination is not approved. Selections from the Baha'i Writings of Some Aspects of Health and Healing. Buddhism. All meats eaten by living beings are of their own relatives. Lankavatara Sutra. Also, after the birth of the baby, care must be exercised not to kill any animal in order to feed the mother with meaty delicacies and not to assemble many relatives to drink liquor or to eat meat, because at the difficult time of birth there are innumerable evil demons, monsters and goblins who want to consume the smelly blood. By ignorantly and adversely resorting to the killing of animals for consumption, they bring down curses upon themselves which are detrimental to both the mother and the baby. Kasitigarbha Sutra Be careful during the days immediately after someone's death, not killing or destroying, or creating evil karma by worshipping or offering sacrifice to demons and deities, because such killing and slaughtering committed, or such worship performed, or such sacrifice offered, would not have even an iota of force to benefit the dead, but would entwine even more sinful karma into previous karma, making it even deeper and more serious. Thus, delay his rebirth to a good state. Karma means retribution. Kasiti Garba Sutra. Gaudai. The most important thing is to stop killing, because animals also have souls and understand like humans. If we kill and eat them, then we owe them a blood debt. Teachings of the Saints. Christianity. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Holy Bible. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Holy Bible. Confucianism. All men have a mind which cannot bear to see the sufferings of others. The superior man, having seen the animals alive, cannot bear to see them die. Having heard their dying cries, he cannot bear to eat their flesh. Mencius. Essenes. I am come to end the sacrifices and feasts of blood, and if ye cease not offering and eating of flesh and blood, the wrath of God shall not cease from you. Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Hinduism. Since you cannot bring killed animals back to life, you are responsible for killing them. Therefore, you are going to hell. There is no way for your deliverance. Adelila. He who desires to augment his own flesh by eating the flesh of other creatures, lives in misery in whatever species he may take his birth. Mahabharata Anu Islam Allah will not give mercy to anyone except those who give mercy to other creatures. Hadith Do not allow your stomachs to become graveyards of animals. Hadith Jainism A true monk should not accept such food and drink as has been specially prepared for him involving the slaughter of living beings. Sutra Katanga. Judaism. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. Holy Bible. Blood meaning flesh. Sikhism. Those mortals who consume marijuana, flesh, and wine, no matter what pilgrimages, fasts, and rituals they follow, they will all go to hell. Guru Granth Sahib. Taoism. Do not go into the mountain to catch birds and nets, nor to the water to poison fishes and minnows. Do not butcher the ox that plows your field. Tract of the Quiet Way. Tibetan Buddhism. The offering to the deities of meat obtained by killing animate beings is like offering a mother the flesh of her own child, and this is a grievous failure, the supreme path of discipleship. Zoroastrianism. Those plants I, Ahura Mazda, or God, rain down upon the earth to bring food to the faithful and fodder to the beneficent cow. Avesta. Everybody knows that vegetarian diet is good for our health and to save the planet. They will be awakening their own great, compassionate, loving self-nature, and then their level of consciousness will rise up automatically and they will understand 
more than they ever did, and they'll be closer to heaven than what they are right now. Hi, Master. Hi, hi. Yeah. <laughs> After the live video conference with Master for the Korean version of Burji My Life in April, yes. the president of Chung Nyeon Sa Publishing Company, uh, Chung Sung Hyun, was so moved by the event and suggested that uh, we write a kid's book about uh, global warming and vegetarianism. Mm. We would like to write the stories of how children around the globe have been affected by climate change and the livestock industry. Mm -hmm. We will emphasize the methane part and include contents from Supreme Master Television. This book will benefit children as well as teachers and parents. You yeah. will write that book? Yeah, me oh. and other sisters. Oh, okay, here, yeah. try. But it uh, will take at least six months to publish this book. Uh -huh. Now we heard that we are very short of time to save the world. Therefore, we are wondering if we should write this book or focus on other jobs to spread vegetarianism. Well, this is also for saving the world, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. You do it if you have talent, if you can print, okay? Thank you, Master. Welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Mm. 很感谢师傅的加持，然后妈妈开了那个爱家蔬菜馆，很感谢师傅。嗯，开了爱家蔬菜馆之后，恭喜一条一条街都是那个吃肉的，就我们一家是蔬菜馆。啊，恭喜！
，来送给政府部门吃。嗯，很多政府机关的工作人员吃了以后呢，他都觉得非常好啊。哎、呃，是啊、呃，他们深有体会，都支持我们做这份工作。会了，会了。哎、呃，嗯，做的应该快乐做了。高高兴。<笑>啊，谢谢师傅、嗯。如果想赚一点点钱，就为了要，要有时候要换锅子啊，什么，是吧？煮酒的会烂掉啊，嗯，也可以的 ，OK。谢谢不要不要赚太多就对了，哈，刚好合适、啊谢谢。OK。啊，大陆政府很好吗？很多国家要救国没那没你们那么容易啊，啊，你们做很自由自在啊，去哪一国都可以的。来这边做了赖了好几天了，<笑>那边政府非常好的，啊，而且哈，最近呢政府都去替替那个。人民在在民啊，盖房子哎，然后还帮助很多贫穷的国家，有两种打仗嘛啊，一种就是外交战，嗯，一个是呃武器战啊，嗯，第一个是最好的，永久的，嗯，而且让他们很那个很高高兴兴的说服的啊，高高兴兴尊重你。跟着你，呃，随从哈，尊重，还有，啊，对了，从命了哈，然后用武器的话，也许短暂可以控制人家，因为人家害怕，人家没办法跟你讲什么，不过心里面哈，那个古恨记啊，不会晓得，早晚的事情哈，会把那个用暴力哈，用那个武器成功那个国家哈。早晚就会有事情，那个恨气哈，不舒服的气氛呢，会送到你的国家很多麻烦，外交麻烦，或是内招麻烦，或是病生病，或是经济会倒霉，或是人民不愉快，所以那种因因果果了哈。所以我们修行的人看得出来，赢人性是最难的。那个去打仗啊、杀人啊，然后残破人家的国家，这个太容易了。有钱就可以了哈、啊，有那个武器的力量就可以了。不过这个不得人心了，不得人心，而且不得天天性，天堂也。不高兴，啊，天地人都不高兴，嗯，因为打仗的话会破坏很多，破坏那个国力啊，啊，国财啊，哈、啊，还有那个伤害很多人民，伤害很多，也动物啊、小孩啊、儿女啊都有，然后那个破坏力很强啊，是就我也不是人死而已，房子倒啊，然后经济也被。堕落下去哈，很多房子会破坏哈，然后收化、啊、耕田呐、啊，很多那个经济的方面都被障碍的，不是那个被占的国家而已，嗯，一个是被占，一个是侵略的国家啊，意思说你侵占的那个国家啊，也是受害啊，那个业障真的太不可思议。任何国家去打仗都是损害，有时候认为 OK 去打仗就会占到别的国家，然后会有这个那个啊利益嘛哈，看人家财产多啊或是什么什么的。不过终于哈以后还是会惨的，会惨，不惨这边就惨那边了。天国的法律啊，不可以不准的，一律都不差。